and I think I saw a question. Yeah. Did you test for radon in the house after you did the efficiency? Before we do a test, we do um, combustion appliance zone testing. So we do we just any, test anything that is combusting, so furnace, water heater. We do that testing. Um, we try and be conscious of asbestos issues, lead issues. Any house obviously built before 1985-ish is going to have um, those possibilities. Um, through our testing that we ran, and that's a gas sniffer, CO testing, um, all part of our blower door and initial audit. Um, we didn't do specifically a radon test as part of ours, um, but we do have connections in Waterloo, Cedar Falls area and our other communities. If a, if a radon test was to be conducted or an interest was there, we could connect you with somebody. And I would say that um, in the experience, even with the farmhouse, you know, they were able to increase energy efficiency, um, but in an 1870s farmhouse is never going to be sealed so tight that we have the same concerns that a house that would be built in you know post 1970 will have. So I, if I'm remembering the statistics right, there was the equivalent of like a three foot hole in the, the upstairs uh, or anywhere in a wall um, when they talk about the amount of airflow that was going through and they were able to decrease that like a foot. So there's still, I mean there's still a lot of air running through the house in terms of um, any concerns that we might have there. Yeah. And one of the things that our um, audit test does is actually that blower door that you saw a picture of earlier tests air infiltration. So there's a certain amount of air that you want circulating through your home, a healthy amount of air so that you're not sealing it up tight and there's no air moving. And there are certainly instances, I would say probably one in every three when we test homes, and it tests at level and we don't do any air infiltration. We say your house has a healthy amount of air, we wouldn't want to tighten this up anymore and we'll focus on just energy efficiency measures. Um, and there's certainly times when we get into a house, house and we do audit testing and we identify a gas leak or that something isn't combusting correctly. And that's so, so important because we don't want to go in and, and tighten your house and have you breathing unhealthy air more than you were before we arrived. So that, that safety testing is vital and at the front end of our services. Jim? Oh yeah, back to the radon. Mm -hmm. uh, we remodeled our house about 25 years ago and put a new basement under an old farmhouse, under a 100-year-old farmhouse. And at that time, the recommendation was very strong to test for radar be radon before you remodel and then afterwards, and then about every 10 years after that. And um, so I would think as you weatherize houses and tighten them up, that a radon test would be uh, very important to, to do. Very and it's idea. very simple to do. You just, mm -hmm. Go to the hardware store, buy a little canister, put it in your basement for a certain amount of time and send it in and that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, very good. Do you give specific recommendations on older farmhouses and what, how the re-insulation work would be done? Uh, we live in an 18, uh, 890 farmhouse and we're a contractor 25 years ago, really do a bad job. Yeah. And uh, so I'm curious how you handle that. Because there are some big mistakes being made currently on remodeling projects on, on older houses. For instance, covering up the old wood siding. Sure. So but that, removing it. So how do you handle The that? process of the audit for us was them coming in, like she described, with the clipboard and really kind of going through item by item. And then they brought that audit to us and they made suggestions. And so we had the opportunity then to, number one, decide how much money we wanted to spend on things and to see really what they found. So in fact, this um, list here came directly from um, from the, the paperwork that we got making the suggestions for what needed to be done on, on, the, on the farm. And to go a little bit deeper into your questions, we run into a lot of, of old homes and typically, you know, um, depending on period, when we, we have anyone call in, we say, you know, do you have the general uh, age of your home? So something like yours, we're probably looking at a big A-frame, you know, wall cavity, floor to ceiling um, type of home. And as far as making recommendations, we do. We try and be un, we're unbiased in ours. So we don't say, like, call Jim Smith over at this, you know, because we don't want to give unfair advantages to specific contractors. Um, but we certainly just do general assessments and say, look, we've taken a look in your attic. You could probably use four to five more inches of insulation. Um, depending on how much you want to spend, you could spray in, you know, newspaper cellulose insulation. That's great, but not fireproof, not waterproof. So if it gets wet or something happens, it's not going to do its job. You could go for rigid spray foam insulation that's, you know, waterproof, airproof, completely sealed cell. So we, we kind of give people those options. 
Um, the other thing that we do is certainly make recommendations for things that we can't do. So we recognize in a lot of ways we have limitations. We're not interested in being insulation contractors or window contractors. Uh, we don't want to displace an entire sector of the, the building construction world. Um, but a lot of times we say, you know, call your local utility with this, you know, fridge or freezer you've had in your basement since 1970. They'll come and they'll take it out for you and they'll give you a rebate if you buy a new Energy Star, you know, refrigerator, things like that. A lot of times it's just a consulting piece. Um, if we do run into instances, and we certainly have, where we've had contractors that have been in at some point before us and they realize, hey, this lady's, you know, furnace isn't, isn't venting out of her house, it's venting into her attic or something like that. We'll, we'll, you know, realize all of these things and from there we'll just try and help her seek out resources that can get those fixed and at least make people aware of the situations that they have because we run into a lot of situations where maybe the job wasn't done correctly or it was a, a DIY home improvement fix maybe gone wrong, you know, 20 years ago and it just got left that way. And so um, we try and be problem solvers, but certainly run into houses all the time that's like, well, we've never seen anything like this before. So how can we really tackle that issue and, and be helpful to the homeowner? I should probably explain. The, the contractor came in and did a nice job, but they put insulation on top of the wood siding and then siding on top of the insulation. But when the energy jar was down in our house, the guy said he created more problems than he solved mm -hmm. because we never dealt with the fact that the old siding should have been removed. Mm -hmm. Then the house should have been correctly re-insulated. Yeah, like then you, 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 you site it correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then there's always a solution because your site is perfectly good. Yeah. And you're insulating so you need to get like the third layer is your problem. Yeah. 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 And I mean something like that, yeah, it certainly will the most that we can do in a lot of those situations is just make people aware of that situation and try and direct them to resources that could be of help to them. The way they described it, because they actually um, fixed like a little hole in the roof um, for us, but they, they can do general repairs, but nothing that would require a general contractor. That's kind of where the line ends in terms of um, the services that Green AmeriCorps provides. Yeah. A couple of yeah. Log homes. We, I think we've worked into a couple, but they are a very special breed of home. We actually got contracted by a local um, uh, park that's over by Fort Dodge because they have a bunch of cabins that they've done log cabin work on, and they'd like to see sort of do audits on all those to see the energy efficiency of what they're looking at. So um, that will be a, that'll be our most, I guess, involved project with log homes. We don't not work on them, but I know that they present sort of some of their own challenges. Can I see another hand up here? Yep. Yep. How much did you spend repairing that chicken coop? It was about $300 total. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. And so practical farmers covered half of that cost, and then we covered the other half. Yep. yep. Go ahead. Can you repeat the questions as they come to you? Sure. And also, the way to your right, which is in the corner, can you speak up a little bit? You bet. I'm supposed to be using the mic. I like to kid myself because I was a teacher that you can hear me, but I know that's not always the case. Can you hear me now? There we go. So um, the question was about how much did we spend on this project, and we spent about $300. Um, PFI covered half of that cost as a grant, and then we covered the other half. And as I said, with the 1870s farmhouse, because my dad was a veteran, we didn't have to pay for any of the upgrades to the uh, farmhouse. And to elaborate that a little bit, um, the, the materials that we use in this chicken coop were all rigid foam board and then um, USB board, which are probably some of the most expensive materials that we have. I would say when we go into a home on average, materials wise, we spend around 35 to $50 on a home and efficiency improvement, just depending on what the needs are. And to clarify um, with free materials, the way that our program operates is that labor is completely free of charge to anybody, anytime. Um, but people who are low income, 65 and older veterans, or people with disabilities, uh, we operate on a good faith policy that if anybody tells us that they qualify under those demographics, we fundraise locally within each of our communities each year to provide the materials free of charge. So that's how we're able to provide materials to those selected classes. So, yeah. is, is, that, is that the veterans thing that you were referring to is what she just described? He just asked if that was the veterans thing, and I would say yes. Yes. So that's what you, you to be know. honest when they come in and they say oh you're a veteran and you qualify for this program and then I knew my dad did the rest so I think so so yeah whenever somebody calls in for just a general inquiry we do an intake process that asks them several questions and one of them is you know we provide free materials for these demographics do you feel you qualify and 
some people say yes, some people say no. They say no, they simply just pay for materials at cost. So if they, you know, paid thirty-seven fifty in materials for their house, they pay us thirty-seven fifty. So any other questions? A bunch of great questions, though.